What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different here for this channel as it's going to be more of a discussion video than a gameplay commentary, but don't worry there will still be gameplay in the background for anyone that has a short attention span and can't really keep focus. But yeah, recently I upgraded the highest attack weighted team possible with Shadow Sharpedo, Shadow Ghastly, which by the way is level 50, it's not even 1400 CP and it still has a slightly higher attack stat than the Sharpedo, and of course the undisputed king of attack, Attack Form the Oxys. Now as you can imagine it didn't go particularly well, I only managed one win in 25 battles and even that one win was very lucky as my opponent made a pretty significant mistake, but obviously I don't think it's really good enough content to make that the focus of the video, so instead we're going to be talking about why GBL might feel stale to a lot of people right now and also discuss 10 potential solutions that both my subscribers and myself have come up with and also the limitations of each solution. Also since I'll mostly just be reading notes that are bullet pointed, I've decided not to bother with a webcam for this video as it won't feel particularly personal. But with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. So there's actually one Pokemon that I'll eventually build that has an even higher attack stat than both Shadow Sharpedo and Shadow Ghastly that can upgrade the highest attack team even further than it is right now. Can you guess what that Pokemon is? This Pokemon is currently available right now by the way and I am combining both base stats with the Shadow bonus so do take that into account. But anyways, with that being said, let's just get into the video. Now right off the bat, let's start by saying that GBL feeling stale is an opinion, it's subjective. There might be some people right now that think GBL is in its most enjoyable state that it's ever been, and obviously with all the stutter lag and frame drops that are happening right now, that probably isn't the case, but maybe if we went back to about a month ago before these substantial issues arose, that might be the case. So just bear that in mind, it's an opinion, some people may agree, some people might not. So the reason that I think GBL feels a bit stale is because it just feels super repetitive, it feels like I'm battling the same Pokemon all the time, and regardless of the number of Pokemon that I use, which by by the way, I've got like over 500 Pokemon built just for the Great League. It doesn't really matter because I'm always facing up against the same Pokemon. Now, if we look at the PV Poke rankings, anything around the 400 mark is actually pretty usable and can see some play, but you're just never going to see that much variety. You'd be very lucky to see even 50 different Pokemon in a full week rotation of the Great League. Now, even when we have rotating leagues each week, new cups every couple of weeks, and depending on the cup, it can feel a little bit exciting, bring some new life into the the game for a brief period of time but eventually it's still gonna feel stale as the meta condenses and everyone starts to run the same things. So why is there such little variety? Well recently in a previous video for the question of the day I asked everyone what their main reason was for battling in the Go Battle League and a lot of people mentioned the Stardust or other rewards, some mentioned the long term goal of hitting Legend or encountering a Pikachu Libre for the shiny chance but surprisingly there weren't many people that said the main reason they played GBL was because they enjoyed battling and to me that is very concerning concerning. So we look at the more common answers of battling for rewards or battling to improve your elo, both of those things are going to require you to win as much as possible. If you want to maximize your dust gains you literally have to go 5-0 in a set and obviously if you want to hit legend or a leaderboard place or whatever your long term goal is, you have to be very consistent. If you want to be as efficient as possible you use the best Pokemon available, it's as simple as that. It doesn't matter if there are over 400 viable Pokemon, if you want to maximize your gains you stick to the best Pokemon available. So there lies the issue straight away. Way. It's pretty obvious, but people are too afraid to run anything other than the top meta to achieve their goals. Something I want to add to that is there are a lot of very strong toxic teams out right now, which only increases your efficiency as the battles take half the time since it's mostly just tap, 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 and you don't even need to put your full attention into the battle. Now, just to be clear, winning a lot and having fun probably go hand in hand for a lot of trainers. I'm not going to try and make out that these trainers that are only using the strongest meta Pokemon get zero enjoyment out of the game and are only doing it for the rewards and gaining ease but I'm sure most people will get to the point where they're always using the same Pokemon, they're always facing the same Pokemon too, and that's when the game starts to feel incredibly stale. Now another limiting factor which doesn't really help with the lack of variety is the CP formula. For those of you that don't know, the attack stat is weighted much higher when calculating CP, which is the reason bulkier Pokemon with high defense or high HP, or sometimes both, are much better for the Great and Ultra League as they just have a much higher stat product. This immediately means that there are loads of Pokemon that are a massive disadvantage and basically need the best moves possible in order to compete with the Pokemon that are much bulkier. So what are the potential solutions? The obvious thing here is to increase the variety of Pokemon being used in the Go Battle League, but that is much easier said than done. 
Recently, I also asked in a question of the day, what is the number one thing Niantic should do to encourage more variety in the Go Battle League? And the truth is there isn't just one solution. There isn't one single change that's going to fix everything. I think multiple of these suggestions from my subscribers need to be implemented together in order to make a significant change. But here are some of the things people suggested, as well as my own ideas and thoughts. So for solution number one, this person suggests banning more Pokemon in the Remix Cups because whilst yes, the Great League Remix was quite refreshing at first, there are a few Pokemon like Gligar, Poliwrath, Annihilate, Mantine, Mandibuzz, Steelix, Carbink, Dugong, etc. that are all pretty common in the Open Great League and it would have been nice not to face those Pokemon super frequently. Now the issue is, and the Remix Cup is already proof of it, it doesn't really matter how many Pokemon you ban, a new meta will develop and eventually it will condense and feel very repetitive. It might feel exciting and refreshing in those first few days, but after a while it will get stale. So this kind of moves smoothly into solution number two, which is if Niantic ensures that each cup only sticks around for one week. I think the solution is pretty simple and it would help to prevent new metas from feeling stale. And I do want to add that I actually think the cups we've had this season have been much better than in previous seasons, but it hasn't really helped that we've had most of them for two weeks, sometimes alongside a Go Battle weekend where we can do up to 100 battles per day, two days in a row. So obviously by the time we get into week two, we're all very tired of it. Now for solution number three, this person has suggested we have a non-ranked system and it's something that a lot of people have been asking for for a very long time. It would allow people to be much more experimental with their team selections without fearing they lose all their elo when their team doesn't perform well. The only thing I will say, and actually someone also mentioned this in a reply to their comment, but we've had many interlude seasons in the past where there is no elo, you just get to the max rank by winning a certain number of games, and people were still sweaty with very little experimentation. If there is a similar reward path for the ranked and non-ranked battles, a lot of people are still going to run stuff that's going to get them more wins and allow them to earn more Stardust, or more Pokemon encounters or items or whatever it is they're grinding for. If there is no reward system, then as we've already seen, since most people are playing primarily for their awards, they're just not going to bother playing unranked battles. So again, in isolation, I don't think this is the solution, but in combination with a few other solutions that I'll be talking about later in the video, this certainly could help and I would love to see this implemented. So for solution number four, we've got this person suggesting guaranteed rewards for battling so that losing is almost as good as winning so that it wouldn't be so discouraging running suboptimal teams. Now in theory I like this idea but it would be very hard to implement since of course people could just run 10 CP Pokemon, lose every single game and get nearly as good rewards as everyone else with no effort at all. Not to mention that for everyone that wants to legitimately play, half the games would be against opponents intentionally losing which also wouldn't be fun. So in theory a really cool idea but almost impossible to implement. So this next suggestion tackles the same sort of problems as the previous but I think this is just a lot more effective. This person suggests rewarding extra Stardust for using Pokemon outside the top 100 and I think this is actually really cool, you just need a way to define the top 100 Pokemon. If it's based on usage then when selecting Pokemon maybe just have a symbol to show which Pokemon is or isn't in that top 100 range. But again in what time frame would they use because if it's live usage I think that would be quite difficult to implement and if it's usage from say the previous season like we've seen with Remix Cups it doesn't really factor in any Pokemon that receive buffs so again whilst I really like this idea I think it kind of just depends on how they implement it. So this next person is suggesting making more moves viable and I'm going to group that with giving Pokemon new moves because they are pretty similar and sure it seems like the obvious thing to do but it kind of is something that Niantic is already doing each season they're probably just not doing it at the rate we need them to. So at the current rate it might make 3 or 4 Pokemon substantially more viable compared to previous seasons, but that's just not really enough of a shake up. I also see when people speculate changes they'd like to see, they'll mention, oh well we can't touch this move because X Pokemon will be way too strong, and that unfortunately makes things incredibly restrictive. So as an example, Yonkus recently made a video talking about how Niantic could improve each of the evolutions, which I definitely would recommend you check out the video, I always really like his speculation videos because they are just quite creative. But anyways, there are certain moves like Frost Breath on Glaceon that he says you can't really touch that because Pokemon like Dugong would be too strong, or buffing Confusion for Espeon would then make Cresselia even better. But I personally think Niantic could buff certain moves and then just remove them from Pokemon that would be too strong. And I'm not suggesting taking away moves that are already part of their recommended moves, as that is directly nerfing those Pokemon, but instead, for something like Frost Breath, literally not a single Dugong is running Frost Breath, so I see no harm in taking it away from Dugong's move pool. For solution number seven, and this is also related to moves, I want to emphasize more giving stronger moves to Pokemon that are more attack weighted to even the playing field. 
I think Breaking Swipe was the perfect move for Haxorus and Rayquaza, since they're both so glassy and giving them a 35 energy move with good damage per energy and a guaranteed attack buff meant that they could stay in battles for longer. It didn't really make them OP, it just allowed them to more comfortably beat the Pokemon that they should already be beating. And to an extent, I also really like that they gave it to a bunch of other glassy Pokemon like Sceptile, Heliolisk and Rhyperia, but obviously they then completely ruined it by giving it to Steelix and as a result, they had to nerf it. So yeah, I'd like to see more really strong moves for glassier Pokemon, but they just need to be careful about how they're distributed. So the next solution is to limit each Pokemon's usage and there are several comments about this. So the first one is suggesting a rotational cup where you can't use any of the same Pokemon already used in the same set. So as a result, each set would force you to use 15 unique Pokemon. And I don't really mind this idea. I actually will borrow it for one of my solutions, but whilst I want to encourage more variety, I don't think forcing people to change their team every battle is the best solution. The other suggestion is to make it so that we can only use a certain Pokemon five times per day and you get a similar result where people are going to have to use at least 15 different Pokemon per day but again whilst it would encourage a bit more variety from an individual's perspective it isn't necessarily going to broaden the variety that we see in the meta as everyone could end up using the exact same 15 Pokemon over the course of a day. So finally we make it to my solution and again I want to stress that in isolation this probably still won't be enough to encourage the variety that I'd like to see but in conjunction with a few other solutions that I've already listed I think this could be very promising. So my idea is to implement daily and weekly challenges that give rewards that are actually enticing but don't necessarily depend on just winning matches. So for example some of the daily challenges could be KO3 Pokemon with the charge move overheat and as a reward you'd get 5 charge DMs. Another one could be use 15 unique Pokemon in one set so like I mentioned sort of stealing the idea from one of the other people that I mentioned it but rewarding 5 rare candies for doing so. And also win with 3 Pokemon outside of yesterday's top 100 most used Pokemon and reward them with 30k Stardust. That way, yes, it is one that does rely on winning, but 30k Stardust for just one win is a very nice reward. And then some of the weekly challenges could be use all 18 different typings in the Go Battle League and rewarding with a star piece, correctly no shield 50 resisted charge attacks for an elite charge DM, and use 30 unique shadow Pokemon to reward with a shadow legendary encounter that's also great league eligible. And then maybe go one step further and say that anyone that completes all of their daily or weekly challenges gets an extra star us bonus. And I think with something like this you could probably give everyone the same weekly challenges but vary the daily challenges so not everyone has the same challenges because whilst it might be very entertaining seeing everyone running Darmanitan trying to get those three KOs with an overheat it's not really encouraging variety it's just encouraging people to use the same oddly specific few Pokemon. So those were the 10 solutions obviously I didn't touch on a bunch of things like making changes to the game mechanics i.e shortening the switch timer so that you have a bit more play up against hard counter matchups because you can swap out of matchups a lot faster or maybe adding a show six pick three format for a completely different style of team building and gameplay experience that might also encourage more people to compete in the play pokemon regionals these are more just solutions that wouldn't really change how we play the game but more so to encourage people to use a much wider variety of pokemon so let me know your thoughts in the comments and let me know if you have any alternative solutions so that's gonna be it for today's video if you did enjoy it please make sure you leave a like leave a comment letting me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications that way you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video and if you want to take your support even further you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos shout outs at the end of each video custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments i want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of